I'm almost to my coast property, hoping there's no big disaster here like there was last year. I haven't been here since last fall. I spent much of last summer cleaning up after the timber company next to me clear cut their property and a bunch of trees on my side blew over during the winter. I've had to stop along the way and clean some of the blackberries up on the access road through the timber company. This electric chainsaw is coming in more handy than I ever imagined it would. Looks like nobody's been in here in a while. Looks like nobody's used my road since I was here last. Last summer I didn't get around to repairing the gate situation because I wasn't real motivated to dig new posts in rocky, dry, hard soil. When I left last fall, I just nailed up some of these boards with big nails to make it look like it was just a fence and not a way to get in. Now I'm remembering that I forgot my crowbar that I was going to use to tear this fence apart so I can get in. Since nobody's even been up here since I left, all I really did here was locked myself out. The nails are too big to pry out with a hammer, but I have an idea. Why am I wearing a hard hat? Because I'm having a really bad hair day. I already looked at it this morning and had to suffer the trauma from it. This way you don't have to see it. I'm saving you from that trauma because you still have a chance. My wood splitter loader and unloader tree is still there. Now for the most important thing. Check the spring, make sure it has water in it. Of course it's gonna have water in it. That's what it does, it's the spring. Ah oh yeah, just the way it's supposed to. It's grown up here since last year. My water jug holder upper that was here eroded out of the way over the winter. There's water advertised in the stores as being mountain spring water. That's nothing compared to this. This is the real deal. It's not a lot of water, but it's good water. Mm. You haven't lived until you've had water directly out of a mountain spring. All the firewood I cut last summer is still here. Part of my agenda for this summer is to sell all this firewood that I cut last summer. There's a snake in there. Well, hello, snake. Not very friendly. I provided it with all this habitat and it won't even come out to say hi. Might as well haul this away if it's gonna be like that. I'll wait until I come back in August with my dump trailer. That's when people usually start buying firewood around here anyway. Since there are no disasters here this year, at least none that I've seen, I haven't looked at the rest of the property, but last year the disaster was because the landowner next to me, the timber company, clear cut. I think whatever was going to blow down from that blew down last year. Now since there's no tragedies here, I have all summer to figure out what I want to do, which I guess can be whatever I want to do. Now I got to come up with what I'm going to do. Before I get too carried away coming up with woods projects, I want to overcome some of the problems I faced last year when I camped out here from August through, well, into October, I think. In this climate, it's just a beautiful climate. Camping out here is so simple. I can sleep in the back of the truck. It's comfortable. The mosquitoes are not really a problem. The biggest problems I faced were electricity for charging my cameras, my laptop. I do run a YouTube channel after all. The other one was refrigeration. I had to keep going back and forth to the store to get ice to put in the cooler. The ice itself is not expensive, but the time, the inconvenience was a big problem. I ordered a solar, not a solar, but a, an electric cooler. It didn't ship before I came down here. Hopefully I can contact them tomorrow, get them to ship it to my dad's house, local in town. The other problem is internet. After all, I do run a YouTube channel. I do get cell service here, but it's really slow uploads. I've been using this Jackery power station and solar panel that my friend Dan let me borrow. Uh, these are so handy. The problem is it's just not enough capacity for what I'm going to need. 
it does good with the laptop and the computers, but the solar, not solar, the battery powered chainsaw, well, ultimately it's solar powered. It has almost enough capacity to charge this. It has to have the solar panel plugged in for it to be able to charge this fully. To charge this, my laptop, my cameras, the electric cooler, and another exciting electricity consumer I'm gonna try out, I would need a much bigger unit. One that's probably gonna cost thousands of dollars. Instead of doing that, I've been talking to the old jarhead who is really big into solar and doing some research on solar. And I just happened to have someone contact me from this LiPo4 battery company. They sent me a couple of these to try out, which I've been doing. This 100 amp hour battery is the equivalent of a deep cycle battery, one of the big ones, which weigh a whole bunch but this is so light. I think it's around 20 pounds. These are what the solar people are going to now. One of the big advantages is you can drain them down all the way and it doesn't damage them the way it does a deep cycle battery. And they're supposed to last a long time if you treat them properly, some say over 10 years. Some say probably even a lot longer than that. With this, I can't really get a full charge on the chainsaw battery. I already have this little pure sine wave inverter. I've been using it for years. If I attach this, with this I have an over 12,000 watt hour power station that could charge that thing probably at least four times. Attach a solar panel to it, I could keep going all day long. One of the advantages of having a YouTube channel is people like to send you free stuff so you can show it on your channel. Most of the time I turn them down because I don't want to promote the stuff. With these, I was going to buy some anyway because they're going to be a big part of what I'm going to be doing all summer. I was going to show some solar things on the channel anyway, so that worked out nicely. Now these batteries are more expensive than a deep cycle. They're often $230, $250, but these are on sale for $179 right now, I think until the 9th. Hopefully I'll get this video out before the 9th. If I don't, I'm sorry, you're kind of hosed there. Hopefully my internet will allow me to get this video out soon enough. With the testing I've done so far, they've worked well. I wanna test out, see how many times I can actually charge a chainsaw battery off of one of these. Test out the electric cooler to see how long it will last on one of these. Then the other exciting electronic device, see how long it will last. It's hard to calculate the wattage that they say they'll use because both of those things will vary depending on how you use them. Once I figure that out, I can figure out how many of these batteries I'll need and how much, how many watts I'll need for solar panels. Enough about that for now. Let's go wander around the property, see if there are any disasters that happened over the winter. First stop, the spring, top off my water jug. I put this piece of wood under there. Helps keep the water jugs in place. Let's go back over here to the spot last year where my dad helped me haul the firewood rounds out. That last place we salvaged looks about the same as I left it. Trees around it are all looking good, but there is this patch of it over here that I left. They're only about a year old, so still some decent firewood. This dug fir they're laying on is a good sized tree. I left these ones last year because it's Douglas fir, so it'll last longer than the grand fir. This should still have a lot of good wood in it. Then there's one more down there. Since the road's right there, I could easily yard them out that way. I could yard all these ones out that way too. This is the main disaster area from last year. Still have these big logs. Really big logs. The heartwood is probably totally solid. The sapwood's probably good enough for firewood. There's probably more volume in these logs than all the trees I ran through the mill on the other property this year. Just in these four trees. This is the top of another one just up the hill from those that's just as big. And there's another one over there that I didn't get to last summer. There is some salvaging I could do this summer if I decide I want the wood. I'm gonna hang the trail camera right here. This is where I had it last year. I got bear, cougar, elk, along with the usual animals. I put it here because this road 
is one of the few easy ways to get from that side of the property to that side of the property. Or from that side of the property to that side of the property, of course. There's a lot of rugged terrain up here and down there. This is the easiest path for anything to go through. I got those other critters on the lousy still photo camera. Maybe this year we can get some good video. There are a few people who don't like that I've started promoting a few products, even though they're products I want to use myself. But what I have to say to them is, when you go to your job, your business, whatever it is you spend hours a day doing, when you decide to start turning down a paycheck and start doing it for free, after that happens, I'll be happy to continue that conversation with you. Got a little bit of a landslide here. That could take a bit of work to get this road open again that goes to the other side of the property. Here's a situation. We do have a disaster to deal with this year. A lot of sediment came down the creek this year. I've never seen this much. And it washed out the creek crossing. These rocks and all this sediment is new from last winter. There are salmon berries. They look like yellowish, orangish raspberries. They look like they'd be good, but they're not very good. Sometimes I eat them anyway, just because, just because. They're okay. They're just a little bit of a disappointment. If we follow the creek up, might find the source of all this. Maybe there was a big landslide. Whatever happened, it really changed the creek bed in here. With all this fresh gravel, I think the creek is seeping underneath now. It's a lot easier to walk up here than it used to be. There's the water. I don't think there were any unusually big rains here this year. Everything looks normal. Just the creek bed has been scoured out and there's a lot of sediment. Now which fork is it coming from? This fork? Or that fork that you can't see from here because of this ginormous log. This right fork looks like it could have some new sediment in it. But the left fork looks normal. This all looks like old rock that's been here a while. This is the main fork. I'm surprised that it's coming from the other fork. This looks normal here. We could follow this fork up, see where all that sediment's coming from. But who knows how far we're gonna have to go. Maybe save that for another day. Make sure there's no disaster up there I need to go deal with. The main thing we learned here today is I have a new disaster to deal with. Last year it was a tree disaster. This year it's a road disaster. Okay, disaster might be a little bit of an exaggeration. But since this place is a long way away from my equipment that could easily fix this, I'm gonna have to come up with some kind of a solution. It's not super deep right here, but it's quite deep here. Having equipment handy, no big deal, but not having equipment, big deal. Okay, maybe just a moderate deal. Depends on whose deal scale we're using. We'll deal with all that later. If you're in the market for a LiPo 4 battery, this is a really good deal. 100 amp hours, $179 the last I looked at the link. I think that sale is only for another day or two. But even without the sale, these are a good price. I think they were just over $200. I don't remember the exact price. They do have some limitations. They don't like really cold weather. You might want to look into that. I saw some good reviews on these. They have the battery management systems, the temperature control, all the bells and whistle people want on these batteries. These can be used for trolling motors, RVs, solar, just about anything you'd use a lead acid deep cycle battery for, only better. And at this sale price, they're not a whole lot more than a lead acid deep cycle battery. I'll put a link to these in the description below so you can check them out. That's it for now. See you on the next one.